the streets here on Joburg today and in a new feature to our coverage of the city. My colleague Noshina Mohammed will take a Joburger for a cab ride where they'll chat about serious issues while enjoying the landscape and scenery of this incredible city. And in Cab Talk Extra, you can be a part of the conversation. Write to us, tell us more about yourself and where you are. We may just get Noshina to come pick you up. My name is Leo and this is Joe Big Today. The public holiday, Day of Reconciliation, came into effect in 1994. The intention was to foster national unity and reconciliation among South Africans. But today, nearly 20 years later, does the day serve that very purpose or is it just another day off? We ask this to the people of Joburg. So Jerry, the day of reconciliation, just thinking back, how have you normally spent the day? Um, generally, I'll spend the day with my friends, and, and be it at the park, and, and you know, debating issues, discussing South Africa's issues, you know, and, uh, but a pretty much relaxed, you know, day, generally. Um, if, if there is an occasion, you know, government occasion at the union buildings in Pretoria, you know, then we would actually go there and listen to the speeches. I usually spend the day with friends and family, just relaxing and also thinking back why that day is actually a public holiday. Mm -hmm. Usually I meet with my friends and we'll, we'll go, we'll have a bride somewhere or uh, hang out at, at each other's house and swim, something like that. Well, I've normally spent my day with my family. We don't really go out much as a family, so most of the time we're just indoors watching TV or listening to music, just spending time together. When, when the holiday was put in place back in 1994, the whole point was to foster reconciliation and unity among South Africans. Do you feel that you do anything on the day that sort of goes in line with that? To be quite honest, I don't think so. And I don't think most South Africans do that. Most South Africans have mm -hmm. made it a norm to just drink and with friends, with whoever they're drinking with. You want to be around people, so definitely there is an element of, of unifying. And if you think about all the festivals or, or, or the, the festivities that happen on the particular day and the amount of people that go there, it's definitely something unifying, you know, whether they're doing funny things or non-funny things, they're doing it together and that's, that's unity. I wouldn't say I've been contributing to it essentially, but like uh, I've got a lot of um, different well, culture friends and different race friends, so I think uh, that's always a good way to start and a good way to just show your appreciation for the day. Look, I think uh, they spend the day in spirit, because since that time, you know, we enjoyed what we, what we got. <laughs> To me, it's something that I do every day, you know. Um, if you've done something wrong, to me, I just forgive you. <laughs> Even if you haven't asked, uh, asked for forgiveness. So yeah, it's basically that. So I haven't, I don't do something, you know, just because it's a day. I just constantly do things because it's important. It's, 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 it's human. My name is Tume Longfumadi. We are watching Joburg today. Joining me now in studio is Anand Naidu, an ex Joburg and now based in Washington, where he is a general news anchor for China Central Television. Anand, thank you so much for being here. You covered Nelson Mandela's release from prison extensively a few years back. You're here now covering his passing. What's that been like for you as a journalist? Well, we've come a long way. You know, at that time when I covered his release from prison, I was in radio at that time. I worked for a Johannesburg radio station, 702. Uh, it came as a complete surprise to us at the time because if I go back to the beginning of the 90s, uh, there was a lot of social unrest in South Africa at yeah. the time. The violence was getting out of control. We'd been told many times by the South African government, the white minority government at the time, that change was coming, uh, but we tended not to believe it. We took all of that with a very large grain of salt. So when we'd heard uh, at the end of 1989 that F.W. de Klerk, who was going to be making this announcement in Parliament that he was going to be saying something significant. There was a lot of scepticism about that, but there he was in Parliament, and I remember at the radio station we were listening to this, and our jaws dropped as we listened to him, you know, announcing the release of Nelson Mandela, the unbanning of the ANC, the Pan-Africanist Congress, and the Communist Party, um, and you know, it just moved so quickly from there to the negotiations. Yeah. 
uh, to the elections of 94, uh, by which time I had moved into television. I was working for the SABC. And shortly afterwards, um, I got lucky, moved to the United States to work for CNN in Atlanta. And, and now we're covering his passing. Uh, you're, you're going to be making the trip uh, to Kunu. As a journalist, um, how have you prepared for this? How has it, how has it felt covering the story? Well, you know, one of the things about Nelson Mandela was, is that uh, his death didn't come as a surprise because he'd been ill for some time. He was 95. Unlike his release, yeah. Unlike his release. Yeah. So, you know, we were prepared for that for some time. But, you know, coming back to South Africa, um, I didn't know what to expect because we'd heard a lot of reports about the, you know, how people felt about Nelson Mandela, how they feel about the current government in South Africa, etc. Uh, so there was a little bit of uncertainty about what was going to happen. But one of the things that one sensed immediately after his death was announced, yeah. and I was still in the United States at that time, I had not left to come to South Africa, was that there seemed to be a level of optimism, a, a positive spirit in this country that suddenly came from nowhere. And I think we've seen it in recent years, only twice in this country before that, and that was when he was released yeah. and when the election took place, and then again during the World Cup of 2010. It was that mm -hmm. same atmosphere. There was a lot of uh, very positive feelings among people. There was this just sense of optimism that everything's going to be okay. You, your career started out uh, here in the city, as, as, you, as you mentioned. It's, it's been 17 years mm -hmm. uh, since you've been back. What's it like being back in Johannesburg when you came through Orange Tambo? I assume that's how you came through. <laughs> that's how I came through, and then I came into the city. And, uh, you know, one of the things you do, of course, because you've lived in a place, is you look for familiar places, you look yeah. for familiar things. And I was um, pretty shocked, actually, that a lot of Johannesburg has changed so radically. It's been so built up right now. Uh, there are buildings and places that used to be fields, uh, places that I used to drive through, places that I used to walk through are no longer there. Um, so, you know, in that respect, you just have to embrace the change that's taking place in the city. But uh, it's, always, it's very gratifying, though, you know, to be back, to meet old friends and to go to new places in Johannesburg. Yeah. The city has just become something very, very different from the time I lived here. And Ant, thank you for your time. You're welcome. <laughs> My name is Mtusi and you're watching Jobik Today. And that is it for Jobik Today. But as always, it doesn't end here. We can still keep the connection alive on social media. Follow us on Twitter at Joburg Today. Give us likes and comments on Facebook, joburgtoday.tv. You can also follow me on Twitter. That's at Christine J Today. We play out today's show with a song by Newton's Second Law. It's called Fact of Life. Enjoy the rest of your day. Till tomorrow, bye. Back in ETV. Hi there, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Balcony TV Johannesburg. I'm Al Franco, and we're on the balcony here at Randlords. Joining us on the balcony is Newton's second law. How's it, guys? Hello. What's up? We're good. We're good. <laughs> How's that voice? <laughs> what song are you going to perform for us this today? Um, Fact of Life was our, it was our first single. It was number five on 5 FM. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, right, take it away guys, show us what you got. Yeah. Yeah. I was wrong and the feeling is gone. Lights went off as I walked away. Give me a chance, baby, I will change. Baby, please don't walk away. I said I was wrong and the feeling is gone and the lights went off as I walked away. Give me a chance, baby, I will change. Baby, please don't walk away. So please don't leave me now. Let's make it work somehow. Somehow, please don't leave me now Let's make it work somehow Let's make it work somehow Before I started speaking my mind Ask you now to think of me It's a general old question at the fact of life Will you be there till the end of time? You be there.